Okay, so we've got uh, Avi, we've got JF, um, MD and PhD respectively. They're going to debate whether sex is a binary variable. No one's modding here, so you know it's just on you guys to uh, make it a functional conversation. Uh, go ahead. All right, what do you want? Who start? Uh, yeah, I can start. Um, I'll right. just outline my position and see if we disagree. So <clears throat> the position I have is that the sex that a person can be as standardly used in the literature is not a binary variable. So what do I mean by that? Um, essentially what I mean is when we ask the question of a person, um, what sex are you? Um, it's the same way we ask a person on any medical form or when we classify the variable of sex of individuals and we report it in a peer reviewed publication. So we have subject one, subject two, subject three, and then we have sex as a variable for each subject. Um, it's a variable because it can vary um, as a data point. And we have like say subject one is male, subject two is female, et cetera. Um, so it's a classification of subjects. It's a classification of organisms, subjects, people, whatnot. So that's what I mean by sex. I mean it as a classification system of subjects. And by binary, I mean binary as defined standardly in math, logic, statistics. That is to say that a variable is binary if and only if each value that the variable can take on can only take on one of only two possible options. Naturally, it's a binary variables are dichotomous. So it is either one or the other. So in the case of sex, if it were a binary variable, it would be either male or female. So it can be either, if it has that variable, it, can, it would either have the male value or the female value. It would not have both. Um, do we disagree on anything? Uh, well, uh, I think that we we disagree in terms of the framing that you're trying to put on this. To me, sex is not just a label because you, you're approaching this almost just as a practitioner of medicine, but sex has roots that exist even independent of medicine. We could have a zero need for classification of people. Sex would still be a natural phenomenon. So yeah, I absolutely disagree. To me, sex is the activity of reproduction in meiotic species and species that have sperm and egg. And so in that sense, we are looking at this from very different uh, perspectives. Now, <clears throat> we should ask perhaps, uh, what, what, what does it mean for something to be binary? Because I look at a game of uh, football, for example, Kansas City Chiefs versus Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Uh, is this is the game of football a binary? Well, certainly what matters to the game of football is binary in nature. There's two teams. It's one or the other. Any actions you do will favor one side or the other. And really, the, there can be a, a naked guy running on the football field during an intermission. But we wouldn't, we wouldn't say that this naked guy who just gets taken by the security guards and gets removed, we wouldn't say that he's part of the game of football. Just like we shouldn't think of uh, various variables that are continuous in, uh, in human biology as messing up the game of sex. The game of sex is reproduction. And just like the game of football is scoring points. And in that game of football, you can only score points for one team or the other. Just like in the game of reproduction, you can only furnish a sperm or an egg. So what it means some, for something to be binary is not that each of its elements will be binary. Just like we say that computers, for example, are binary. But if, if you go into a single channel of electrical conductance in a CPU, you'll find that it has the, the, the capability to, to generate analog signals. And in fact, that any, any signal that is interpreted as binary is really deeply just a voltage variation that is analog in and of itself. We just decide to interpret it as binary because we acknowledge that in the computation that the computer wants to do or has been designed to do, 
uh, it's the binary nature of it that matters. So what I say is what matters to sex is binary. Now, if you were to look at a game of, of football and want to make the case that it's not binary in nature, you could say, well, okay, the scores can only be done on one team or the other, but I have all sorts of variables within the game of football that are not binary. And I would agree. Uh, the heat generated by the football uh, uh, jogging shoes or the, the impacts generated between helmets and one, one helmet and another, all of this will follow laws of physics that are continuous and they will be quantifiable in continuous ways. Similarly, when you talk about sex, you can say, well, sex is this big binary game of male and females. And then within that game, there are continuous variables. You can have a little bear, beard or a lot of beard. You can have a little bit of testosterone or a, a lot of testosterone. You can have big boobs or small boobs. And you can be along the continuum on any of these continuous variables. But the reality is none of these are really about what sex is about. Sex is reproduction. It exists in nature because we divide our genes in two and we form diploid organisms that are recombinants. That is what meiotic species do. And there is no third position in sex. There is no solution to engaging meaningfully in the activity of sex uh, while being not a male or not a female. So my position is, yes, you'll find all sorts of other variables. And in fact, you'll find individuals who cannot qualify either as male or as female. And our position on this shouldn't be to invent new sex or identities, although I'm actually willing to, to do it just, just out of politeness. If someone tells me, Jeff, I identify as a dragon uh, helicopter, uh, you know, maybe I, I would be willing in some polite situation to to treat them as dragons and as helicopters. But in the end, what they are developing are identities. Just like someone na running naked on the football field would be saying, I'm neither in the Kansas City Chief nor in the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I'm just a crazy guy running naked on a football field. And what we what what I what how I ultimately see these people who are intersex or who don't who refuse to identify as male or who cannot engage in reproduction or who don't, do not want to engage in reproduction is in the same way I see the crazy naked guy on the football field. He's just not playing the game of football. He's just not He's playing just not. the game of sex. Okay, so we have a an, a lot to unpack there. Um, so I'd like to just start with one one thing at a time. Um, in terms of w when I say, okay, let's just see if we disagree on the following proposition. Like, do you disagree? So here's my position. My position is the sex a person can be as standardly used in the literature is not a binary variable. Like, let's say, like, do we disagree on that? I'll just write it in the, in general. Like, do we disagree about the following? The sex a person can be as standardly used in the literature is not a binary variable. Agree or disagree? Well, I would agree. I would disagree because of because the, the word B. Uh, you could, if you change the word B for can identify, okay. Someone can identify as something else, but cannot be in my view. Okay. Now let's, okay. So, and when I say um, uh, the definition I'll operate, we, we can operate from um, what makes a sex a given, uh, like whether we say it's male or female. Um, mm -hmm. We can say that in um, anisogamous species, uh, that which is male produces the smaller gamete and that which is female produces the larger gamete. So as a sufficiency criteria. So for example, if someone is, uh, if an organism produces larger gametes, i.e. eggs, ovum, that is a sufficiency criteria for them to be a female. If an organism produces smaller gametes, i.e. sperm, that is a sufficiency criteria to be male. Do we agree or disagree with that? Uh, I would tend to think it's more complex than this because I can imagine a species that develops and where the male converges toward bigger gamete. But I, I, I guess that in, in a given species, you could define whatever you define as male or female. In fact, I like to think of it as plus and minus. And, okay. and that, that side of the sexual binary would be constant in that species, yes. Okay, so... We can we can say male is plus, female is minus. 
Is that yeah, something? That, yeah. Okay. And it would be based on a reproductive role. It would right? be based on reproductive cap uh, compatibility with the other side of this binary. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So if someone and and presumably if an organism produces um, uh, plus gametes that are compatible with minus gametes, then they can be labeled as a plus, right? And if presumably a organism that that produces minus gametes that are compatible with a plus gamete, then they can be labeled as a minus, right? In most cases, that would be the case, but there, there, you can also think of a species where an individual doesn't have to be labeled one or the other. It can be the two uh, in those species that allow partenogenesis, for example. Sure, sure. Just to be clear, I'm referring to anisogamous species. All right. Okay, so we agree that, so if we agree for, Anisogamous species that there is um, that we can label the we can label uh, an organism minus if they have a if they produce minus gamete as a sufficiency criteria. So I'm not saying what I'm not saying is that if they produce no gametes, then they're not a sex. Um, I understand there are ways out of that because you can frame it as a sufficiency criteria, not a necessary criteria. Um, but what I'm saying is. If we agree that we can label an organism minus if they produce gametes that are minus and are compatible with plus gametes, and we can label an organism plus if they produce plus gametes that are compatible with a minus gamete, then yes, that I yeah. agree. Okay, we agree with that. Okay. Now the question here is, um, so and then what I'm talking about with sex is the variable of the organism classification. So, for example, you can classify the organism as plus. You can classify the organism as minus, and that is the variable I'm referring to when I say sex in anisogamous right. species. Right. Okay, we agree so far. Yes. Okay. Now, the issue is. For a variable to be binary, the, the the values of the variable need to be dichotomous. That is to say that each value, the plus and the minus, needs to be one or the other. Um, this is how binary is defined standardly in mathematics, logic, and statistics. So if we refer to the variable as the categorization of an organism, whether it be plus or minus, if we observe any other value, um, including a um, anything that breaks the dichotomy, so for example, a plus and minus, then the variable is not binary. Do we disagree um, with that? Yes, I disagree Wait, with okay. this. Um, for example, binary is not defined in the way you want to define it right here. Uh, for example, I have here the Merriam-Webster. Uh, mathematics, a number system based only on the numerals 0 and 1. So that's the sense in which I use binary. I, I don't use binary. And for example, if, if I use binary in the way you use it, then partenogenesis would be a proof that binary sex doesn't exist. Uh, I use binary as a system of representation of a given variable that can take two states. Now, that doesn't mean that a given individual couldn't have these two states at the same time, because I've already acknowledged the existence of partenogenesis, but it simply does not apply to humans. So I could just restrict my case even under your definition and say, well, in humans, sex is binary. Wait, so I take partenogenesis. I think you, you mean to, correct me if I'm wrong, I think you mean to talk about um, hermaphroditism, because we're talking about anisogamous species. Um, I take parthenogenesis to be um, asexual reproduction. Um, are we are we talking about two different things here? Well, the thing is, if you are uh, doing parthenogenesis, so you are doing asexual reproduction, like some frogs, you are essentially being both the father and the mother of uh, of the of the the embryo in a, in a way you are being the plus and the minus that's one way of seeing it uh you can also uh talk about hermaphrodism where 
the, the literally the animal will produce a sperm and will fertilize its own egg. In both cases, you could argue that you are both the father and the mother of the single child that comes out of. Sure, sure. I, I understand that. Um, I just don't understand how that would apply to anisogamous species. How that would apply to anisogamous species? Well, uh, what, what is your question exactly? It applies those those frogs that do this, uh, whether hermaphrodism or partenogenesis, are anisogamous species. Okay, so you're saying that they... Um... Wait, don't they occur without, um, but in parthenogenesis, don't they, um, isn't the reproduction without like, um, w without like fertilization? Oh, okay, you're right. So in parthenogenesis, because the sperm is not produced, then it may not even qualify as meiosis, but then take hermaphrodism and it would, it would be the case that the given individual is a, a sperm producer and a egg producer. So let's put aside partenogenesis yeah, and hermaphrodism would be the case where uh, a given a given individual can be both plus and minus for a given child. Now that's one okay. other thing I would like to mention. Uh, can, something could be binary, and at times you could be zero, and at times you could be one. You know, uh, there are these species that do hermaphrodism at times could be reverting to sexual reproduction where they are merely the sperm provider or the egg provider. And at times they could be both the sperm and the egg provider. Uh, to me, binary doesn't mean you are stuck in a state. It just means that there are two states and there are two states in meiosis. It's either plus or minus. Yeah, so just to be clear, I, I would be talking about um, simultaneous hermaph true simultaneous hermaphroditism. And by binary, I'm, I'm re specifically referring to binary variable as standardly defined. So like when I so my position is, um, I'll like paste it again. The sex a person can be as standardly defined in literature is not a binary variable. So I don't know any um, definition of binary variable. Um, I don't know how binary variable is defined in any way other than a dichotomy. Um, well, it is defined in another way. I quoted the Merriam-Webster second definition. Mathematics, a number system based only on the numerals 0 and 1, a binary number system. That is a division into two groups or classes that are considered diametrically opposite. Okay. Just to be clear, is that a definition of the word binary or is it a definition of what a binary variable is? It is the definition of the word binary. Okay, so so my position was the following. Um, I'll paste it again. So the sex a person could be as standardly used in the literature is not a binary variable. Okay. Yeah. So do we do we disagree on that? Like, or do you think there's a definition of binary variable that's not a dichotomy? Well, uh, you would have to bring your definition of binary variable. Sure. Personally, I work. <clears throat> Personally, you know, you contacted me on this card saying I want to debate, uh, and I can quote you on this. Let me just go back to the the message uh, story. Uh, I wanted to discuss with you sex being not binary. Yeah. Those oh, are okay. the words that's, you use with me. Fine. Then we can. Yeah, that's fine. Um, I can. Um, I can provide like. Um, I mean, I can provide definitions and and statistics that do describe it as a, as a, as a um dichotomy i mean that's fine the thing is uh, you're, you're trying to to get yourself an out here with the semantics of binary versus binary variable which was not even the 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 pretense under which you communicated with me originally as i've shown yes. in quoting you here and anyways are you really going to play this game with people's time on a sunday like this where you're going to start arguing that okay maybe sex is binary but it's not a binary variable are you doing the Excel oh, no. autism <laughs> crap, Avi? Uh, no. Um, I mean, I think it's fine if we go either way, but I'm just clarifying. I mean, I could clarify what I mean by binary as a binary variable. Um, I'm not trying to... Play, play play you know, crap you know, what, what's the yeah, third just, sex, Avi? Yeah, it would be male and female. What's the third? Yeah, male. The, I think there are three classifications of sex there is male that's one male only is one female only is the second one and male and female is the third 
Okay, and which humans on Earth is male and female and can yeah, produce and both sperm and egg and reproduce? Yeah, well, I have a uh, case report of an individual human that can produce both sperm and eggs. Uh, they have reproduced. Um, so they haven't played the game of sex, just like the naked guy on the football field didn't play the game of football. Um, I mean, you asked for a question. You asked me to provide you an example of a human that produced both gametes. Um, and, and I'm giving you a case report of a human that produced both gametes. All right. So you have this one guy who produced these gametes, which have never been proven to be functional and which leads to extreme physical incompatibility. I'm guessing it's very hard for a human penis to be introduced in one's own vagina for fertilization. So what do you have here? You have a difference in the development of the sexual organ of a single individual, which never mattered to sex because sex is about reproduction and reproduction clearly hasn't happened here. Well, reproduction, well, so first of all, it's not the case that reproduction hasn't happened. This individual had already fathered two children. Um, okay, so, so he's a man. Has, has happened. The, the question, the open question is just whether the eggs that this individual is producing, and this is the part that hasn't been tested, the eggs that the individual um, is producing, um, the question is, are those, um, would those be able to reproduce? Now, based on the histology of those eggs, they were morphologically normal. Uh, it's just an open question as to whether, an un or rather an unanswered question as to whether if we fertilize them, would they be able to be, say, implanted in an embryo, uh, in a, in a uh, a uterus or whatnot. Um, and if he, was, if, he could, if he was yeah. to give birth to a child with this egg, all that would all mean is that humans are a hermaphrodite species to some extent, in that case, in a single individual. It, would, it wouldn't change the binary nature of sex because it would just mean that this individual was capable of both being a father two times and then a mother maybe in the future but it would still have participated only to, to, to activities on either side of the sex binary, which is either male or female. Do you take, do you take a standardly defined in literature, in literature hermaphrodites as being both male and female? Well, uh, I mean, if they are capable of both sexual acts, I would say yes, they can change essentially between male and female. That's, that's, that's okay. generally how we think of it. Okay, so then do you take it to be that if we ask what is the sex of this individual that we can have three possible answers? We can have male, female, or male and female? Well, uh, I would say that at any given point and at, at any given act of reproduction, they could be either a male or a female, just like on a hard drive, a binary variable, zero or one, can be at times zero and at times one. Uh, it can change. It's not because it changes that it's not binary. Wait, that's not the question I was asking. The question I was asking is, at the same time, is an individual classified as both male and female at the same time if they're hermaphrodite? Well, the, the question is impossible to resolve because it cannot happen that someone would perform exactly at the same time a male act of reproduction and a female act of reproduction. He's going to have to choose one or the other at any given instant. And but what you can argue is that at some point in his life, he was male. And at some point in his life, he participated to a female act of reproduction. So to be clear, you're saying that it's not possible for a hermaphroditic organism to participate in both um, female reproduction and male reproduction at the same time? Well, it's not going to be at the same uh, Planck instant, right? There will be a, there will be either a second of difference or a year of difference between the two events. So let's just say, wait, so say a hermaphroditic organism has their egg fertilized by a sperm. Um, and while that fertilization process is happening, um, because it's a process that takes more than a Planck instant, um, so while that fertilization process is occurring, they fertilize an egg themselves with their male gametes. Are you saying oh, like okay. well, if they self fertilize, then this uh, this resulting uh, embryo will be 
an embryo that is the result of an act of reproduction in which the, the same individual has been both the father and the mother, that is a male and a female in a single act of reproduction. What I can say though, is that we've never seen this in the history of humanity. So we tend to think of the human species as a species not capable of doing this. Okay, well, just, just to be clear, I don't see why it needs to be self-fertilization. So for example, a hermaphroditic species can have their uh, another individual fertilize their egg. And while that fertilization process is taking place, um, and while like, so for example, while the egg is, you know, dividing um, to be an embryo, um, the hermaphrodite organism can fertilize another organism, right? While that oh, yeah. the, the, there, will be, there will be a time difference between the two. And what I would say is that in the first case, the organism may have been mm -hmm. yeah. a female part to an act of reproduction. And then in the future, it has been a male part. To reproduction, but we've not seen humans engage in this. You know, okay. <laughs> it's very so, rare. So, 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 my question to you is a couple of things. So, so we'll, we'll ask two things. So, the first is like, I, would I take it to be um, as standardly defined in the literature is that hermaphrodites just have the status of both male and female? Now, if you're using it sex differently, I, I get that you you would say like, well, what I specifically mean by um, being both male and female is that you need to, um, in order to be both male and female, you need to engage in a reproductive act um, simultaneously that is both male and female reproduction. Like, is that, do I have that right? Well, yeah, uh, I, I dislike essentially this whole idea of using sex as a flag of people. People are not their sex. You can, I mean, we, we understand that in society we have to have the sexual and gender identity and we have to have these labels and we've constructed language in a way that acknowledges the difference between he and she. So we have all these social functions, but I dislike this because ultimately those are not facts of the world. The facts of the world are that if you engage in the game of sex, you're either on the sperm side or the, the egg side when you are... Uh, doing it in a particular event of reproduction and sex makes no sense in any other uh, as any other thing than a reproductive function you know that there are things that be, th there are reasons why people engage in sex that are not reproduction they may engage for social status for pleasure for hedonism all sorts of things but all of these things wouldn't exist if it wasn't that sex is the act of reproduction and sex is ultimately the function of reproduction just like breathing in oxygen is the function of lungs and so i don't like putting flags on, and labels on people and saying you are male you are female uh, but sure, ultimately no, but it makes sense because 99.999 percent of the humans do not qualify for this uh, exception of the hermaphrodite capable of generating two gametes in 1971. Yeah, sure. So just so we're clear, um, so you, I understand that you may not, not like that category or different or the way that sex is being categorized or classified um, in literature, but my position is just with respect to the, the literature here. So do, do we at least agree that the way sex is defined um, with respect to organism, I'm not trying to do a gotcha with like the variable thing. Like I, it's just, I just want to see if we agree or disagree on that. Do we agree that the way sex is classified of organisms as used standardly in the literature is not a binary variable? Well, which literature? Because I'm a biologist and the yeah, way sure. I speak of sex, that's how biologists talk about sex. Uh, so I don't know which don't literature know. you're talking about. Certainly the doctors who engage in this, they don't think through very deep. And so, yes, I'm pretty sure that in the medical literature, what you say is true, but it's bad literature. It's literature that doesn't care about why sex even exists in the first place. These people are faced with patients who come with ailments in their clinics and they're trying to solve it. It's noble and everything, but it's not science. Well, we can turn to literature and the biology as well. I'm just saying, like the way I've seen hermaphrodites described in the biolog in the biological literature, um, I've seen them described as both male and female, and that's the only I've never seen them described as anything in terms of their sex category as anything other than both male and female as an organism. 
well, maybe yeah, you because they do share ca- they do share characteristics of both. But it's not bad to take the time to phrase things correctly and realize that you can really be defined as participating to an act of sex only when you truly generate the child. And that therefore, the real precise way in which we could define hermaphroditism is that they are at times engaged in the father side of the act of reproduction and at times on the female side. You think it's impossible for a human uh, true simultaneous hermaphrodite to engage in self-fertilization? Well, that is the other option, in which case you are self-fertilizing and therefore you are both the father and mother of your own child. But, okay, but I, 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 I never, I've never seen it happen, right? Do you have a report where it happened? No, I don't have a report where um, it happened. I have a rep- I have like a paper, well, I have a paper arguing the, the possibility of it happening, which is the question to, in terms of binary variable. Because the key is with, with binary variables, the key is that um, a variable is binary if all the members of all values of that variable can only take on one of only two possible values. Um, and the key is it's, it's with possibility. Um, and so long as it's possible for a human simultaneous uh, hermaphrodite to self-fertilize the way you're conceiving um, the label of both male and female at the same time, um, then it would be possible, uh, then it would be impossible actually for the variable to be binary. So long as it's possible for the outcome to take a third value. So in order for sex to not be binary on that case, we would need uh, to, der- to have an argument for self-fertilization the way you're conceiving it to be um, impossible in order for the variable to, to not be binary. Well, uh, not at all. You know, I think you're, you're putting... You're pulling this into such autism territory. I'm surprised that I'm not the one adopting your argument today, given my level of autism. Because, you know, we could argue to a certain extent that a hard drive, which is made for only uh, welcoming zeros and ones in its data writing system, we could argue that it's possible that there would be a third value. I mean, you could go in and change the, the nature of the magnetic stuff in there and perhaps make us marks with a little pen on the hard drive, and that would represent a third value that the hard drive can take. So if you want to argue within the space of possibilities, then I'm going to just tell you, okay, bro, maybe uh, maybe one day humans will not be a binary sexual species. I don't even have objections to it. In fact, I think it's very possible what you present and that it's a dangerous possible future for humanity. But all I will tell you is that your, your your argument is completely disconnected from current reality. It's like we don't even have a single hermaphrodite to begin with who would have self-fertilized, and you're already talking about the possibilities. Well, yeah, there's a billion possibilities that, about what could happen to the human sexual uh, behavior. We could eventually reproduce with computers, and they could make up genomes out of mixes of three or four people. But I thought that I was coming to a debate about the current reality of stuff. Now, as, a bi- as an evolutionary biologist, I do acknowledge that species can take any direction. And I've thought it's of some of the most crazy directions, like reproduction with computers. But all I will say is that this has not happened yet. And so Absolutely. as far as current humans, they are a binary sexual species. Yeah, so a couple of things there. So... The first thing in terms of like binary code, so regardless of how the code is generated, whether it be um, through whatever voltage criteria you set, um, the code itself is is forced into a state of being binary. Um, Binary code is is impossible to be anything other than binary by definition. Um, So it's it's defined such that each variable can only take on only one of two possible states, um, each value for the variable. So it's not the case that my argument would apply to binary code as well. It absolutely wouldn't. It's just it's an analytic entailment that there could no be no third value um, for that variable. Um, In the and that's what I'm what I'm talking about a binary variable that there's only that the sex classification is only the possibility is only one of two possible values. Um, It's just like saying bachelors. But I just mean it's, it's, it's the same way we can say a bachelor is a, an unmarried man. Bi- a binary code can only take one of only two possible values. It's just if the if an, if it's anything different, it's not a binary code. 
Um, whether, how you get the binary code, how you generate the binary code is a completely different story. The other thing I would mention is that um, I, don't, I don't take it to be um, the way, like the whole self-fertilization thing, I don't think that's actually necessary to be described an organism as both male and female at the same time. I think every time I've seen hermaphrodites described in the bio biological literature, um, they are described as, I mean, I could pull examples out if you'd like, but they are described as being both male and female. Um, and they don't specify that it's like, well, they're male or female at different times. Um, the, the class, the, the way they classify it, I, I understand what you're saying, that they can take actions at different times. And if they don't, then they're taking the male action at one time and the female action another time. But I think standardly in the literature, the hermaphroditic species are considered both male and female. Um, and I understand you don't like that. That's fine. Um, so you can you can have a different like criterion schema. Uh, you can have a different definition. But the way I take it to be standardly defined in the biological literature, the standard classification of hermaphroditic species are both male and female at the same time. Um, as far as well, um, uh, just to yeah, comment on this before you continue, uh, I'm very disappointed because when I come to the Ask Yourself Discord, what I find is usually a high level philosophical argument. And what you've been repeating for almost 35 minutes now is always how it is defined in the literature. Who gives a shit how it is defined in the literature? What matters is what is true. Of course, people use sets of words and fields will talk of things in ways that are understandable. But I don't think there is any confusion within biologists that when they talk of hermaphrodite individuals, they are not at all times producing sperm and at all times producing eggs. Uh, you're making an argument from authority and even semantic authority. I don't give a shit how many scientists out there are using the word in that way. What I'm telling you is that there is a reality about how the organs function. And as far as within humanity, how they function has been in a binary way, which is male and female. It might be different in the future, but for now it's not. And I will also note that you do realize, please, that your argument is framed in a way that has social consequences right now, right? We're not just talking about the future here, Avi, and we're not talking about a future possible state in which humanity could produce its sperm and eggs and maybe self-fertilize. The arguments that you're taking are giving power and giving a voice to a, a leftist narrative that exists in current society about the continuum of sex and how sex binary doesn't exist and how you can identify as whatever you want. Are you conscious that your argument lies within that big umbrella or are you just being okay. autistic about the future? Okay. What, what's your position on leftism okay. and it's, yeah, what's your position, what's your position? on cultural Marxist view of gender? Okay, so, so I just want to, because there's two points you made that I want to respond to. So the first point is in terms of, um, it may, you made it sound, and maybe not intentionally, that I take some position as like an appeal to authority, like if it's defined in the literature this way, then it must be true. Like that's just to be clear, that's not my position. I'm not saying that things are, are made true because they're defined in a given way. In fact, I don't take the view that definitions are even propositional. Um, so I don't think that definitions are capable of having a truth value. Um, I just, all I'm saying is that if we, um, all I'm saying is that based on how um, the classification of sex is standardly defined in the literature, um, it follows. We can, we can derive entailments that it's not a binary variable. That's all I'm, that's all I'm trying to say here. Um, so that's, that's that point. So I'm not saying that, you know, if it's defined in the biological literature this way, then it, you know, then it's true. In fact, that would go against my view of definitions even being propositional. All I'm saying is that if someone wants to use sex as a classification system as it's standardly used in the literature, it wouldn't be a binary variable. Um, and then the second thing with, with social consequences, so just so we're clear on, you know, the spectrum thing that you brought up, um, my view doesn't entail that um, sex is a spectrum. So that's not, that's not a view that's entailed. In fact, if there's three sexes, I wouldn't call that a spectrum. I would just call that a, I wouldn't even call it a continuous variable. It, it would be a, it seems to be a category, um, maybe an ordinal categorical variable if we can order, but it's, it would be, seems to be categorical. It's a discrete variable. Um, 
And I don't see how that entails any sort of continuity, even let alone a spectrum. Um, so, I mean, I mean, we can we can formalize this to make it as clear as possible. But so just on those two points, like I'm not making an appeal to authority. I'm not saying anything is true or false um, based on how it's defined. And I'm also not arguing that sex is a spectrum. Well, that's reassuring. So then uh, we are left with uh, not much thing. Uh, either you accept, either people of the audience will go on and say, all right, I think like JF where sex is binary and there are certain individuals who seem to display certain functions on both sides at times one function at times the other. And it's your choice whether you want to see them as defective bits on a hard drive or you want to create a third category for them. Uh, but I will note that the only way in which you justify creating a third category is not through a logic that looks at how genes transmit across generations, the true function of sex. It's just in this kind of mental resistance in which you want to put a label of a sex on individual. It's because you see sex as a tool of classification. Now, if you're in that domain, you are, as far as I'm concerned, within the human labeling domain. You are not really looking at truth, looking at the universe. Because once you understand why sex exists in the first place, you see that it's so much bigger than just a way for people to categorize each other. And if you want to categorize people in three sexes, go ahead. But that's just you. That's just semantics. It's just classification. It's just perception. The universe comes at us with a distinction in humanity, a distinction that has led people in the past to only be capable of furnishing sperm or egg to a given act of reproduction. And that is where the binary nature of sex exists. And this binary nature of sex is only undermined today by Avi. If you want to put the label of sex onto the individual, but I don't care about the individual. I care about the genes passing on every generation, splitting into a sperm or splitting into an egg. This is how it works. And this is how I see sex. So nothing that Avi said is wildly false today. It's just a particular view that ascribes uh, a label function to sex where I see a reproductive function to sex. Do you think that, um, that the way you, um, okay. So just to be clear, so I agree. Uh, so, okay. So first of all, thank you for saying that I'm not saying anything false. Um, so, okay. So we agree that there's nothing, um, false that I'm saying. So it's just, I, so at the individual level, um, I, I don't see sex as a binary variable. That is to say that there there can be more than uh, two possible outcomes. Um, and I don't think you disagree with that either. Um, you just have a different um, uh, you, conception of sex um, because you... Now, but the one thing I, I do have with the way you're conceiving it uh, um, is that if I just don't see... Um, well, actually, you've said binary and not binary variable, and you're you're using it. You're, I take it to be that when you say binary, you're saying that it's like something like composed of two things, and the two things are opposite, but they're not mutually exclusive. Is that correct? Exactly. Just okay, like just... a bit on a hard drive can be zero at times, can be one at times, but it's still a binary bit because it can be zero or one. Can a bit be a zero one at the same time? On your well. Uh, not in the hard drives as we process them. Now you could think of a hard drive of the future that does this, but not in the current hard drives and not in the and current that, humans either. Would that be binary on your view? If, if, a, if a single bit could be a one zero instead of a one only or a zero only, would, that, would you take that code to be binary? Well, if that bit could be at the same time zero and one, it would probably qualify as a qubit rather than a bit. Uh, it would still be a system that has two states, but it would, there would be a superposition of state. It's complicated, you know, uh, but it's, it would be termed a qubit in computing. Do you take the code? If there was such a, a code that had a uh, state of one, zero and one and zero at the same time, do you take that code to be a binary code? Well, it depends on what you do with it, really. And if you were to process that code, and in a way you interpret that bit, you will never 
you would never interpret that bit in any other way than either zero or one. It would be binary. If you were to take the information of the superposition and somehow downstream process it as such as a zero and one at the same time, then as far as I'm concerned, it wouldn't be zero and one. It would be essentially two. You would have invented a third state. The fact is that there is no third state that goes downstream down the generations in human reproduction. Any human that is alive today has been born from a sperm and an egg. And this is where the binary lies. If you add a way to inject other things than a sperm or some syringe that carries the information of a sperm, then I would say, yes, uh, sex is not binary. And the future, may be, we may very well be close to a future where sex is not binary anymore in humans. But for now, it's been. That's my state. That's my state. Wait, so so just just to be clear on the first question, because I'm I don't know if I got a clear answer. So if if there is a one, uh, a zero, and a zero one in a code, um, do you take that code to be binary? Well, uh, again, it depends on what you do. The interpretation of that code could could be binary or it could not. There is definitely a third state, and if you were to interpret and care about that third state, then you would be engaged in non-binary computation. You would be engaged in perhaps quantum computations. Okay, so I, I think we're using, if you, if you think it's possible for there to be three different values to a code and the code to be binary, then we're using the word binary very differently. So the but way, the way I'm using... This. Yeah. So the way, the way said, just... if you process this information with a binary code that that only cares about whether it's zero or one and ignores the possibility of zero and one, then you are effectively downstream of your code. You are processing by like it, as if it was binary, just like we do every day in our computer. Our computers sure, ignore the analogous variations of the voltage because they care about whether a threshold is crossed. Just, and right. if it's crossed, they say one. If it's not crossed, they say zero. Right. So just to be clear, my question is with respect to the code itself, not how you are processing that code downstream. So with respect to the code itself, do you take it to be that if a code can have the values 0, 1, 0, 1, do you take that code itself to be binary? I'm not sure. It's, it's a question that demonstrates you don't understand computers and you don't understand my statement or one of the two. Uh, there is no such thing as a code existing without the downstream computation of it. A code doesn't stand there without being interpreted at some way. It's meaningless. And so, and so if you look in a hard drive or in a CPU in a current computer, you will see that the, the codes are not binary. It's the way we interpret the codes that are binary. Uh, the electrical voltage that varies in each of these tunnels have variations that are non-binary in nature, and yet we treat them in a binary way. So when, when, you say, when you determine whether something is binary, you're not really looking at that thing independent of the downstream interpretation of it. You have to look at the downstream interpretation of it because it's all that matters. A code isn't a code if it's not not read as a code. So are you saying that if a code is not interpreted, um, then it is, um, then it is neither binary nor not binary. It doesn't just, it's, it's, it can't be binary if, um, it's not interpreted. Is that what you're trying to say? Exactly. Information is meaningless without a sender and a receiver that have a certain alphabet as to how they will interpret this information. Uh, so just so we're clear. <laughs> Yeah, if you, if there's like a piece of paper and it has like zero one zero, it's like a here's like says here's the code zero one zero zero one zero one zero one, etc. And um, there's only zeros and ones for each value, and it's in the forest, and no one will ever like interpret it. Would you say like there is not a fact of the matter about whether that paper is co code is binary or not? Uh, well, here's how it can be binary, and here's how it cannot. Suppose that someone cares about the nervousness of the person who wrote these zeros and ones, and he sees that in certain zeros, he perceives some shaking in the drawing of the zeros. And suddenly your binary variable is a variable that contains a third state, the nervousness of the writer. 
Yeah, so we can just say that they're, I mean, we can hand wave this away by just saying it was typed by some machine. Um, and it, it, they all look the same. All the ones and zeros look exactly the same on the paper. It's there just may be differences in the way the machines write. There may be indices about the date at which they've printed that code, which would give me an indice of where these machines were created and when they printed those things. A code is always something that depends on the observer. A code is not like objective reality. Uh, the, the question of the, if a tree falls in the forest and I don't see it, does it really fall? Yes, but that's not true for codes. Codes are interpreted by receivers, either machines or humans. And in the way they are interpreted will be determined what they contains in terms of information. So just so we're clear, so let's say the code just there's a piece of paper with code on it that just materializes out of nowhere, such that each number is exactly um, each one is indistinguishable for the other one except they're in different positions, and each zero is in, indistinguishable for the other zero except they're in different positions. Would you say that that paper, that paper's code is not binary if it's only ones and zeros? Depends on which information I can take from the code, but I, I would say. You say don't. Let's say you're not you're never going to access the code. Your code is on another well, planet somewhere. If I'm not going to access it, it's not a code. Oh, a code okay. means so, something that something that encodes a message of some kind, some information coming from somewhere and being interpreted somewhere else. Okay, so you are you take the view that if a code is not, um, if a code is not interpreted, or it, it, that a code will never be interpreted, then the code is not a code. Is that what you're? Is that the view? Exactly. Take the, the relativism of code, uh, woke pill, Avi. Come with me. Wait, what? Come with me, Avi. Be, beca be, become woke on the code pill. So the code pill is... It's all relative, is... bro. So the code pill is that if a code is not interpreted, then it is not a code. Exactly. Well, what, what's let, let's actually Google it. What's the definition of a code? Um, okay. A system of signals it? used to represent letters or numbers in transmitting messages. Are you telling me that messages can be transmitted without a transmitter and a receiver? No, but I'm saying that just because something is commonly used for something that it doesn't mean that it's no longer that thing if it isn't if it doesn't if if someone doesn't use it for that thing so for example like a wrench is commonly used for a given purpose a screwdriver is commonly used to you know undo a screw but if we just stipulated that the screwdriver is uh on a different planet it would never be used to undo a screw it doesn't just because it doesn't it's never going to be used for that purpose doesn't mean it's not a screwdriver anymore well, okay, so you, you are talking about codes that don't, for example, reach their yeah. intended receivers, but there would still be an intended receiver to these codes. It's just that it's not, never someone has had the chance to decode them. But to me, inherently to the idea of code is the idea of communication. And inherently to the idea of communication is transmitting messages, just like the mainstream definition uh, that I get from Merriam Webster right here. Uh, Yes, it's a system of signals, a code, and therefore it involves a decoding process, a, a process by which some information is encoded into a signal and a process according to which it's decoded. Now, these two sides of the process can decide to encode binary information or non-binary information in the signal. Yeah, but I, I just don't see how that... like addresses the the issue like the issue i'm seeing is that it seems like you take it to be that if the transmission doesn't occur um then the code can't be binary or non-binary and well yeah, what i'm trying to bring your uh what i'm trying to bring your attention to is the fact that we can't really say of a code whether it's binary or not until we know exactly how it will be interpreted and how it is sent uh, the code itself doesn't have the property of being binary or not without knowing what elements of it will be captured by the receiver. Just like if I was to tell you 01000111, but in the tone of my voice, you were to detect some nervousness or something, you would have essentially taken 
a code that looks binary, but you would have made a non-binary interpretation of it. Uh, as far as humans go, and going back to the subject of sex, the thing is that the next generation receives nothing else than zero or one, that is sperm and egg. And it, it needs both to, to make a single human being. So from the perspective of intergenerational transmission, which is what I care about, this is where I say sex is binary. It's that the, whether, whether there is other signals present, whether the parent that is male could have been a mother in principle, it's not happening. And so because the next generation always gets only the sperm and eggs of the, the past generation, I say sex is binary. So let me just try. I think this will really get to the heart of the issue. Um, so let's just say there is a variable and the variable um, is taking only each value for the variable is taking only one of only two possible outcomes. Um, would you say that that variable is binary? If a there are two possible outcomes, I, I was I would believe that the first condition you've laid out that's already enough for me to say it's binary. If it can only take two values, it's binary. So so if each so what I said was if you have a variable and each value of the variable, each value of the variable can only take on one of only two possible outcomes. Would you consider that variable binary? That's not what I would call binary. I would call it uh, dichotomous. It, it's a variable, variable that can only take either one or the other. Okay. I mean, we can go into binary variables being defined as dichotomous, but that's fine. So let me just ask you this. So let me, um, so if a variable has two possible values and each value can take a linear combination of those values. So for example, let's say we have um, A and B as the possible values. Um, and, and we'll ignore the zero case where it doesn't take either A or B, um, just to make it simple. So would you say that if each, that value one has the value of A, value two has the value of B, value three has the value of a b would you say that this variable is binary or not um well it depends it depends on what have you assigned this variable to if you had assigned it to sex and you are then assigning those value one value three value two to individuals I would tell you there is simply a distinction between the act of sex and the individuals and in that case you you've compounded those variables into var value three because it was an individual, but this individual happened to be capable of the two sides of the sex binary. As far as your mathematical system of classification, perhaps it would qualify as a non-binary variable, but it's a non-binary variable in my view about what doesn't matter. What matters to me again is the transmission of genes across generations. And as far as it goes, it's either A or B. Your value tree does not exist in humanity. Do you think that, okay. Um, and do you think that, let me ask you this one. Um, do you think that if a variable, uh, if you observe a variable such that the values are A and B and, val and, um, and um, value one is A, value two is B, um, and all the values observed are A and B. However, it is possible such that another value can be A and B. Um, do you take that variable to be uh, binary or not? Well, those thought experiments of the possible lead you to, I guess, some kind of domain of restrictions of the possible. Because when I look at a hard drive of a computer, I have no doubt it's binary. But I also have no doubt that it would be possible for the hard drive to be made in such a way that it's not binary anymore. So the possible that you raise here is very dangerous because there's no limit to it. It's like, what if, what if the universe was different? What if the hard drive was made with different types of metal? What if the hard drive was written differently? Ultimately, if we're into the space of possible, I will tell you anything is possible, almost. Uh, so. Yeah, I would say the possibility is not something that matters to me.
because there is no state of facts about the status of variables as being binary or not. What really matters is how those variables play out in the real world. Uh, in the world of possibility, everything is possible. There could be 10,000 sexes. It's just not happening in reality. So I will concede you the possibility, but I will say it's not reality right now. Okay. Um, so, okay. So I appreciate um, that. And the one thing I'll just add to that is that um, given that we know that this individual produced fertile sperm, um, and the only question is with respect to the egg, um, the egg's morphology was normal. It produced the latest stage of the egg that a individual can produce, um, which was the the egg in the graphene fo follicular stage. And we don't, I mean, the only way to, for the egg to really, um, uh, I mean, the egg ruptures, but in terms of its like, um, its, its end state, its haploid diploid state, um, it doesn't really mature further until actually it becomes fertilized. And so um, this individual produced an egg that really was at the latest possible stage that an individual can produce the egg um, before fertilization. And so the only question is what would happen if that same individual sperm on your view would fertilize that egg? And it's not like when you say like possibility, anything could be possible. Like this doesn't really seem like something like completely like, like I'm pulling out some like fairy tale or something. Like we know this individual produced fertile sperm. We know this individual produced a morphologically normal um, egg in the graphene follicular stage. The only question is what would happen if you took this individual sperm and fertilized it? Um, if you harvested the egg, for example, you harvested the sperm and you put the two together. And so it doesn't seem like that's very, um, like a crazy, like out of the blue realm possibility. It's not like, you know, if something like, if everything changed about this computer, um, then, then maybe the code wouldn't be binary anymore. The other thing I'll add, so, so that's one. Um, so I don't think it's like this crazy thing I'm, I'm, I'm mentioning. And then the other thing, um, it, although I do agree it's rare. And then the other thing is that, well, again, binary codes are just analytically defined in a given way such that it's not possible for them to be non-binary. Um, so, okay, so we, do we, okay, so do you, first of all, do you have anything to respond in ter to that before we go on? Well, I will say simply, uh, you say it would be relatively easy. Uh, we've not gone through the problem of whether uh, there was physical devices like livable uteruses where a baby could develop. Oh, oh James, real, real, real quick, real quick, just to, just to real quick, quick. I, I'm not saying it's relatively easy. I'm just saying I wouldn't be surprised either way. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. But then uh, well, what I yeah. will tell you is, yeah, perhaps in the future, sex will not be a binary in humanity. Uh, you go ahead and hire the Thai prostitutes to be hosting this hermaphrodite self-fertilized baby. You're going to have to go through the trouble. But for now, it is. That's my Wait, point. Then we're using binary differently because if it's current, if, if it's possible, right, if it's possible for there to be a third value and you still think it's binary, um, even if just because the third value simply hasn't been instantiated yet, and we're operating on two different definitions of binary. Well, uh, if you want to go into the space of possible, it's possible for purple pony to be one of the human sexes. Wait, but we already went through that. Like, clearly, we both wouldn't be surprised if it happened either way. So, like, we're talking, we're not talking about some fantastical out of the blue possibility. Um, we're certainly we're just, not talking uh, about a current or past possibility. So as long as it's not done, I will continue saying, saying human sex is binary. Now we could even discuss about how ultimately this do you think it's impossible? that you suggest. Well, uh, I I'm think sorry, do you think it's there, impossible? There. I think Wait, that you the think it's impossible? Is that what you're saying? Nothing is impossible. As I said, you could be a purple pony in a parallel universe. That would be possible. But the, the, I think you underestimate the physical obstacles here of the fact that this, uh, of normally the human egg goes into the human uterus, gets exposed to a female type of hormonal systems, and then grows. There would be severe obstacles to having this person having the baby. 
Uh, that being said, we can even push the argument further. What if, what if what you say is true? What if uh, its own sperm could fertilize its own egg? You would merely have demonstrated that humans are capable of partinogen uh, of uh, hermaphrodism, of self fertilization, hermaphrodism. That is not even demonstrating that sex is not binary. It's just demonstrating that single individuals can have uh, the two sides of the binary. That's it. Yeah, but then, but then we're using the word, we're using the classification in different ways. Um, because again, so what I, the way I'm, I'm talking about a classification, as I mentioned at the beginning of this debate, I'm talking about a classification of individuals. So the reason people um, seem to, I'm talking about, the, you know, when we ask individuals what sex they are, or when we classify organisms as sex, male, female, like that's what I'm talking about. Um, if you're talking about something else, then we're just talking about two different things when we say sex. So, absolutely. So absolutely. we should be added toward the end of this discussion, because what you're talking about, I'm not interested. I really don't care. You're talking about labels, semantics, how humans call each other, how humans label each other. I do not care about this. Humans can call themselves Tampa Bay Buccaneers, Kansas City Chiefs, or male or female. Those are all discussions of the philosophy and sociology of self-identification, which is exactly where the left wants to bring this whole discourse. I don't care. What I care about I care is the truth. What I care about is nature. And nature gave us a system of reproduction in which there were uh, male gametes and female gametes. And that will remain true, even yeah, if your weirdo from to, the 1970s yeah. self-fertilizes. I just have to interject because like, so I don't see how self-identification is, is relevant to this because my conception of sex has nothing to do with self-identification. You um, have you kept know. what you have kept talking about identification. You're talking I'm about thinking. placing people in categories. Have you ever considered the possibility that there is no there is no need for placing people in a sex category? That sex happens at the level of cells and not at the level of individuals. That sex concerns mostly how meiosis occurs in a given set of cells in the body and not at the whole individual level. Because yeah, we're because using these labels, male and female, in a very practical way. But this is not a discussion about truth. The, the truth is there is a part of your body that engages in that very critical part of the reproductive process called meiosis. And as a result of this, there are consequences all across your body and all across civilization, including the language we use to describe these things. But the language question and the semantic question and the ca human categorization question, that's a managerial question for hospital nerds like you, not for me. Okay, so just so we're clear, um, you're using sex at the cellular level, and I'm using sex at the organism level, right? Maybe. Okay. Yes. So, okay, and you agree that um, if we use the way the or the classification of sex at the organism level is um, would not be a binary variable, but that's not what you're talking about. You're talking about a cellular classification. Or some other no, I don't even agree with this, but I'm okay, saying that I don't have much interest in debating the semantics of human labeling. Self-identification or medical identification, I don't care. Those are problems of technical manager management, really. Okay. I mean, well, I, I mean, I can just deploy an argument just that the way for, for this position, because that is the position I have. I, the position I have is like, because I... I I'm not interested in labeling cells. Um, I'm interested in labeling people or organisms um, as, I mean, which we do all the time in both biology and medicine. Um, and my argument is for why that is not a, a binary variable is as follows. Um, it's, I it posted it in general chat. So premise one would be, if the sex of a person can be is standardly used in the literature, can take on more than two possible values, then the sex of person can be a standard to use in the literature is not a binary variable. Premise two, the sex of person can be standardly used. The sex of person can be as standardly used in the literature, can take on more than two possible values. Conclusion, the sex of person can be as standardly used in the literature is not a binary variable. Now, you may not be interested in the classification system as standardly used. You may disagree with it. You may want to use sex as a classification of non-individuals or non-organisms. But do you disagree with any premise here? Do you think the form of the argument is invalid or? 
I, I don't care about this argument. It's like, I care so little. You've just shown a circle of self-proving statements, a syllogism, as we call them. Uh, yeah, go ahead and uh, go on with this syllogism. It's a syllogism about how humans call things. I don't care about this. We've lost one hour of our life and our audience time. Instead of talking about the true nature of the universe and how it works and why in the end there ended up being males and females in humans, we've talked about possible future states and how it influences our current categorization. Those things are not even based in existing truths. And I don't make claims about the future. So I'm happy that we have our uh, independent magistra. You are talking about future possible ways in which sex could evolve. Could evolve. So I'm kidding you, that for the last three billion future. years, it's not been that way. So just to be clear, I, I'm not talking about future possibility. I'm not trying to make the case that it's um, that it's possible. Um, I actually already think it happened because I'm def I don't consider like the need to um, fertilize oneself as in order to be male and female at the same time. Uh, I think that's the way you're defining it and not the way it's conceived in the literature. Um, all I, that was just a side point to say that even if you were to define it that way, um, I do think that would be possible right now. I don't think that if something happens later, it means that it was not possible now and, it's po and it is possible in the future. Um, but just so we're clear, do you, do you disagree with my position then? Do you disagree with the conclusion that the sex a person can be as standardly used in the literature is not a binary variable? The, it's fallacious to even talk about the sex a person can be. Because, it to have, because what, what does it mean to be a sex? Yeah, um, it refers, so there's different ways of defining that. Um, but uh -huh. what, I, I just don't understand what the fallacy is. Like we can well, you it. go ahead and define your words because you're asking me to agree to a definition you don't oh, sure. provide. Sure. What does it mean to be a sex? Yeah, so as uh, used in the literature, um, to be a sex means to be a male or a uh, female or a male female. Um, one and one way of defining that is in the literature is um, the organism that produces um, in anisogamous species, the organism that produces these small gametes uh, is defined as the male organisms that produce large gametes is defined as female and the hermaphroditic organisms is defined as organisms that produce both large and small gametes are defined as male and female. Okay, and what if the uh, sperm is created at time t and the egg is created at time t plus one? Will then you say was... that this person as a whole is a male and female, or would you say that this person was a male at time t and a, a female at time t plus one? Uh, the latter, because it would be sequential hermaphroditism. It wouldn't be simultaneous hermaphroditism. But in All the right. case very of... interesting. So in... actually, actually, yes, I agree. And I will tell you, uh, yes, there is a possibility that a very restricted number of people in humanity could be hermaphrodites and eventually with uh, perhaps scientific support could eventually uh, self-fertilize or fertilize others alternatively as male or female. The likelihood that it happens and the complications in front of us are big, but it could happen. And that day you might need a... Uh, a third place in your Excel sheet to note that someone has been at times males and at times females. But until it happens, it's not even worth talking about because uh, we're, we're talking about socially engineering ourselves away from the current dichotomy, which is that if you start off as male in life, you will produce sperm only or nothing. And if you start off as female in life, you will produce egg only or nothing. That is functional. That is yeah, so given that I've clarified what my terms are, I'll just post the syllogism again. Do you disagree with premise one, premise two, or the conclusion? Or do you agree with it, given how I've clarified my terms? Okay, let me reread this, knowing that your definition of the sex a person can be is that they produce sperm or egg, and that this can change at times. So they can be male at times and females at other times. If the sex a person can be as tenderly used in the literature, can take on more than two possible values, then the sex a person can be as tenderly used in the literature is not a binary variable. Uh, the thing is, I disagree with this premise. 
since you have mentioned yourself that a person could alternate between a male at time and a female at time, then it wouldn't be the case that they can be simultaneously taking on two possible values. It's just that at a certain time point, they would be male. At a certain time point, they would be female. So I would say there is probably a fundamental error in this syllogism here. I think you're trying to reject premise two and not premise one. Um, premise premise one is a material conditional. Premise two is the actual premise that asserts yeah, that can take yeah, on more yeah. possible so Premise two, I reject it. Uh, because okay. I have been shown with a case where someone was both a male and a female at the exact same time. Well, I just take it to mean that they are producing, they, are, they go through the process of producing eggs and the process of producing sperm at the same time. Like, it's not like the case that, um, well, here on, on this month, they're producing sperm and on this month, they're producing eggs. Like, the egg production process is a continuous process. It happens, and the sperm production process is a continuous process. There are different stages that it occurs. Um, okay, well, here's where we yes. disagree then. Sure. Uh, you have not established that the sperm that they can produce is functional sperm, because here's the sure. thing. Yes I, yes, I have. Yes, I have. But, he, fathered, but, he fathered children. He fathered children, but he yes, didn't he mother children. Did he, he mother children? children? That is the open question. Ah, okay. So you think of a secret conspiracy theory in which some guy in the 70s would have had a secret baby that was never photographed, and you've been influenced perhaps even by the recent uh, pictures of uh, people like James, uh, the YouTuber who does makeup, who makes his fake uh, photos with Maybe fake baby baby is, belly. Uh, no, but you know this trend of guys posing as being pregnant? James Charles, James. that's his name. Oh, James I, don't, I don't know anything. I don't know anything about that. But I just, I just you are imagining a James Charles of the 70s that could have had a baby, but you don't quite know it. And there's no statement in the article you sent me that indicates that it did happen. Listen, uh, wait, okay, wait, maybe, maybe there's a secret society of male no, mothers not, hiding in the cave. Okay. Listen, JF, I've been, I've been more than like, I've been more than charitable to your like position. Like, so I'm saying, given how I've like, I've clarified that given that male is defined as organs that organisms that produce sperm, and female is like as a sufficiency criterion. Females are organisms that produce eggs as sufficiency criteria, and hermaphroditic species are uh, male, uh, male and female, and they are produce both sperm and eggs at the same time. Given how I've clarified that, do you disagree with any premise in this syllogism? I disagree with the idea that an egg is demonstrated to be functional just because it takes the form of an egg. As I, didn't long as long about, it, I didn't say anything about the functionality. I just said, okay, so like, so we can, we can go with that. But like just the way I've said it now, producing eggs, producing sperm, do we disagree on any premise in this? No, yeah, I disagree with the premise that's hidden, which is that an egg is an egg just because it looks like an egg. To me, an egg is an egg, a functional egg is an egg when it makes a baby. This person didn't lead to a baby. This person is not a mother. You said it yourself, he fathered children. So he's a male, that's it. Yeah, so what premise do you reject? I reject the idea that an egg that looks like an egg is an egg. That, that a cell that's, that displays the dispositions and physical characteristics of an egg is an egg. I'm not hearing to a premise. Egg, to be an egg, you need to be able to be fertilized by sperm and lead to a living human being. I'm not I hearing do not a care about your set, I do not care about your syllogism because your syllogism doesn't mention whether the egg is functional or not. So you're putting away the important question. You're making up some fictional definition systems that may work theoretically, but it doesn't have anything to do with reality. So you are failing at proving the external validity of your valid syllogism. It's as if I was saying purple ponies eat carrots and therefore purple ponies shit carrots. It would be beautiful and true in my theoretical system, but there is no purple ponies eating carrots out there. So the external validity of your crap fails. What premise of my argument do you reject? All right. Bye-bye, guys. Much love to the people who listen to this. But this guy is unbelievable. He cannot engage with the true challenge I'm putting to his ideas. 
He wants his circular system of thought to be validated when in fact I told him already, your circular system of thought is circular, therefore it can't be wrong. It just has anything to do with reality. So ask yourself, thank you for inviting me. Much love to the people who listened. And you can come and watch my show tonight at 7 p.m. Eastern time, uh, JFG Tonight on YouTube. Bye-bye, Ab. Bye-bye, Ab. Bye-bye. It's uh, good no talking problem, to you. And I, I, do, I do feel like I want to come in and say one thing. Um, if you want to leave, that that's, of course, fine. But, I mean, it does kind of seem... Like, if he, like, you understand with a formal argument, it's either you need to reject, like, the form or one of the premises, right? Or else it just goes through. Well, I don't care about this formal argument. It could be right or wrong. I don't care. It's not the argument I came to debate. Again, let me repeat what Avi said in his discussion with me. He states the following. Hey, JF, it's Avi. I wanted to discuss with you sex being not binary. I was wondering if we could set up a time to discuss in the Ask Yourself Discord server. So I've made my case that sex is not binary. He wants to make a separate case about something I don't care, which is medical classification annotation. This is something you should care about the uh, college students that engage in medical administration, professional diplomas. I have no interest in debating these IDs. They are classification IDs. They're, they're technical managerial IDs. I don't give a shit. Okay. Well, well I, I mean, it, it sounds like it sounds like the debate's probably coming to an end there. Um, I guess would it be would it be fair to say that you're just agnostic about um the conclusion of the argument in that case? I'm not even agnostic. I find it's a ridiculous and human-centered and label-centered argument. I'm a scientist. I'm interested in the truth. I'm interested in the nature of meiosis and sex. These arguments of labeling, I do not care. It's like what, arguing whether we should call something this or that. I don't care. Call it whatever you want. The reality of nature is that we are a sexual species because of evolutionary pressures that have existed for billions of years. That's what I'm interested about. And th these, uh, these pressures have made it such that we didn't converge toward hermaphrodism. And if it shows up at all in humanity, it is extremely rare. And you can see the difficulties in Havi uh, being even able to affirm that this person is a true hermaphrodite and being able to affirm that he actually participated to an act of reproduction on the mother's side. Uh, my guess is he didn't. That's why we don't have the evidence for it. Now, we can talk of theoretical world and uh, parallel planets in which different species would have developed where they could do this, but we can't right now. I guess that what's, what's confusing to me, though, JF, is that, like, I don't know what... So there's, like, doxastic states. They're, like, states of belief, right? States you can have with respect to beliefs. And other than belief, disbelief, or agnosticism, like, I don't know what other view you could take so when you say you're not agnostic um i don't know i don't want to dogpile because it's both of us i don't know exactly what i think about the argument but here's the problem because you're asking me if i'm agnostic about a label issue the problem is that hidden within this label issue is a set of political interest of leftism of different people who are fighting a war who are trying to undermine the binary nature of sex and if i was to tell you i'm agnostic about the label issue that would be kind of a lie because i care about the label issue to the extent that it's being misused in a cultural war and i wouldn't want to tell you that i'm agnostic because in the end i believe that the very idea of labeling individuals as male or female is an error, an error to which uh, the left is drifting on, trying to, to gain energy and to gain ground in a cultural war. What we have to bring it down to is that sex is about the separation of genes that happens at the level of the meiosis. And this is a, a very important and central aspect of sex, and sex doesn't exist without this. The problem is that most humans and their labeling practices 
are built around not this. Like no one actually goes into your testicles to test if you can do male type meiosis before they call you a man. We based our labels based on various characteristics like beard, testosterone, etc. But let's not let's not mix up the social practice with the reality. The reality is that all of these things like beards, testosterone, uh, sexual differentiation, they exist to serve the meiotic process that happens in our bowels and ovaries. So I guess I guess that this is what's confusing me, and I appreciate you putting up with both of us raising criticism here. Um, and I should mention, Avi's a Trump voter. Like he's not, he's not, I don't think it would be fair to categorize him as leftist, just for the record, even if you think his actions are you know supporting a leftist agenda i don't think he's a leftist i don't know if you disagree with that um but th this is like my issue it's just that he gave an argument and it's valid right so valid in form it, it's a technical term i'm not saying it's sound but that just means the form is right it's modus ponens so it's like either you have to reject one of the premises or you get committed to the conclusion and if you say I don't accept the conclusion, I don't reject the conclusion, and I'm not agnostic about the conclusion, it sounds like you're arguing for some kind of like fourth doxastic state. And I just don't know, like in all honesty, I just don't know what you like mean when you say that. My state is very simple. Next time you want to debate about something, don't misrepresent it to me in DM. You want to debate about the label? My answer to you two weeks ago to your message would have been, I don't care about this debate. I just want to debate about the true nature of sex. Now, in the DM that AV sent me, what I see is a request to discuss the binary nature of sex, not to discuss the binary nature of how doctors call sex, not to discuss identification and categorization and the nature of Excel sheet variables and MATLAB, it's you're bringing me down to an elementary level ridiculous discussion when you promised a debate on the binary nature of sex so my argument is i do not care about the syllogism of mr avi the trump supporter here all i care about is the true nature of sex which is binary in that the receiver of the sexual signal the baby is coming from a sperm and an egg in the same way the reader of the hard drive is reading a zero or a one okay i just okay, want to make, can, make can i make a final make comment a so i think jf i want to be fair to you so it's tell me if i'm wrong but it sounds like this is what you're saying it's not that you're saying that you do, that you don't think the conclusion is true you don't think it's false and you're not agnostic you're just saying you aren't willing to discuss it for, and that's not a shade i'm not throwing shade on you there you're just straight up saying i'm not even telling you if i believe it disbelieve it or if i'm agnostic i'm just not willing to have this discussion because in your view you're like yeah. misled no yeah that uh but more importantly it's not the misleading part it's just if you want to avoid trouble in the future don't mislead me but the reality is i cannot engage on such mundane social ridiculous subjects because i have a public image to maintain which is to always search to discuss about the truth and not about the labels that humanity is putting on things and you're ruining my public image if I engage on this ridiculous discussion. Okay, thanks for humoring my interjection there. Okay, All right. So I, 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 to I guess that's it for today. Yeah, no, I have to respond to that characterization of what of me. So I did not well, uh, maybe, intend to mislead in any way. I did come to discuss the binary nature of uh, sex. Bobby, I maybe just, just in the interest of fairness, he's trying to get out. Why don't Why don't we just do closing yeah, yeah. yeah, sure. That's fine. But I also have to clarify that I'm not a Trump support. I don't think Trump supporter is a is an accurate term. Sure, but you would have voted sure. Trump though. Oh, oh yeah, because of a, the abortion. Ah, uh, so you're not a Trump supporter who's supporting Trump, just like the hermaphrodite is a male female who's fathering children. I don't see what that has to do with the other. But yeah, all right, bye bye guys. Much love. Okay, well if you don't want a, a closing statement, um, I can make a closing statement. So. Yeah, I know. So there, I didn't mislead Jeff in any way. I mentioned I wanted to discuss the binary nature of sex. And at, right at the beginning of the debate, um, I clarified what I meant by by those terms. So I clarified um, that I wanted to know if we disagree with um, the, the sex a person can be as 
uh, standardly used in the literature is a binary variable. Now, he said that he disagreed with it. Um, and so, I and, and like if he has a different working definition of sex, that's fine. Um, he can say that, you know, we're, we're using it in different ways, but I was very clear about how I was using the terms. Um, this happens in debates all the time when you say, hey, let's debate this topic. And then you clarify what you mean right at the beginning. Um, and then, you, well, there may be an, an agreement or disagreement about how you're using the terms. That's not uncommon. That happens. Um, but to say that I did that in a misleading way, I, I don't see how. Um, in any case, um, yeah. Um, so if he's not willing to discuss the topic of like, <laughs> it's also like not this this weird thing that we're, we're talking about. Like this is the most common way we classify people based on sex. Like this is the the most common way we like whether we both colloquially and in medicine and in biology, whether we classify organisms as male or female, uh, whether it's a, per, a form on an ID or whether it's uh, a census collection or whether it's um, a biologist classifying organisms, this is the most common iteration of how sex is used. Um, so to say that when I say sex is um, binary that I was misleading somehow when I'm using the most standard, the most common way of classification. I don't know what he's talking about. Um, but in any case, he simply didn't interact with the argument. He said he disagreed with the position at first. Um, and then he said, and then he wasn't willing to interact with the argument. And then he, yeah. So to just like try to deflate it by saying, I don't care about this. Um, yeah, I, I don't, I don't get it. At first in the debate, he said he disagreed. He couldn't provide a premise that he disagreed with. He couldn't reject the form. So, um, he just went out by saying, I don't care to discuss it. And then he tried to appeal to some weird, um, true nature. Like he didn't care about discussing labels as if the thing he was discussing wasn't a label, like all of these things, sex, um, even the, in the tr quote unquote, true nature of sex, he's talking about that is a label. Um, all categorizations are, I don't see how it's, one is any more of a label than the other. So yeah, I look, and I look forward to anyone who thinks they actually can interact with the position and the argument.